Four continental teams. Three challenges, two stunning locations, and one winner. This is the Obsidian Team Challenge. Welcome to New Zealand's Southern Lakes for the Winter Games NZ. A celebration of all snow sports, alpine racing, park and pipe, and free ride. But this year, for the first time, it hosted the International Obsidian Team Challenge as the finale of the Games. It saw three teams of eight athletes migrate south from Europe, Asia, and the Americas to take on the hosts Oceania in three competitions. Big Air, Park Challenge, and Backcountry Freestyle. The athletes representing each continent are the finest park and pipe riders in the world. Among them are X Games, World Cup, World Championship, and Olympic medalists. They are the most competitive, creative, and stylish skiers and snowboarders on the planet. While their individual performances will contribute, ultimately the winning team will be the one who can become greater than the sum of their singular talents and work together. This reflects the spirit and values of Sir Eon Edgar, the founder of the Winter Games and the namesake of the Edgar Challenge Trophy. Obsidian kicked off with the big air, and for qualifiers, it was business as usual. Two jumps, best score counts. The top four in each category advancing to finals. As the comp got underway, it was clear the teams were starting to get their heads around working together. Oh, yeah! You're up! You're up! In the women's free ski, Ruby Andrews was the first to drop and set the bar high with a left cork nine. But the judges made it clear they were looking for perfect execution, dishing out a miserly 49.33. Team Europe's Julia Tano kept things casual with the left three, which left the door open for the Americas. Elena Gaskell landed a perfect switch left by 010, obliterating all previous scores with a 94.67. Megan Oldham got the memo and sent a left cork nine blunt to the moon for 86. So Asia missed out, Europe and Oceania scrape in with the Americas dominant. In the men's qualies, the free skiing ninja Jen Fuji put everyone on notice with this switch left triple 16. Okay, it being the first jump and fearing an onslaught, the judges went for a conservative 88. Yuna Kangas took a swing for Europe and stomped a switch left 12 with a delicious poke for 73.67. Go back to the valleys, dude. <laughs> Max Moffat had his finger on the button for the Americas and launched into a right double by 014. But again, the judges kept their powder dry with a 70.67. Oceania's Ben Barkley, a.k.a. Bino, got his can opener out and prized the judges' points chest open with a beautiful switch double 16 mute for 81.67. But it was the skiers who didn't make the top four who best illustrated the level. Skiing savant Finn Billis and Beijing Olympic gold medalist Alex Hall both missing the cut. So an even split for the finals with one skier from every continent advancing and Jen Fuji leading the pack. Team Oceania have a great depth of talent across both skiing and snowboarding. It's time to find out who's repping for them from Finn Billis and Cool Wakashima. We have Dave Menzies, uh, Tian Collins, myself and Jess McGregor. We have Daisy Thomas from Australia, Ruby Andrews from here in New Zealand, Ben Barclay and myself. So three Kiwis, one Aussie on the ski side. 
Uh, it's a pretty full-on team. Um, yeah. Pretty full-on? Full-on. <laughs> no, in a good way. In a good way! <laughs> So over to the women's snowboarding and the reigning slopestyle world champion, first ever female to land a 1440 Europe's Mia Brooks, laid down a very casual backside 720 to earn a spot in the finals. Canadian Momo Maha lofted a stunning switch backside 900 into the sweet spot and booked her finals berth. Japan's most gifted young talent, Mari Fukada, went deep with the exact same trick and the judges bumped her another 4.33 points. Oceania's Kawakashima has logged some serious air miles on this jump and it showed. She stomped a backside 12.60. It's a trick that currently belongs to just a handful of female snowboarders. Once again, we see an even split across the teams for the finals with Mary Fukada in first. Cameron Spaulding, the up and coming Canadian ripper, opened up the men's snowboarding with a pristine backside 1620 tail, 85 points. Ryoma Kimata followed suit with a back 16 of his own, going one better than Cam Spaulding for 86 points. Europe's resident hype beast, Nick Huber, appeared to have found the same cheat code and locked in another 16, much to his own delight. Nora, Nora. Teammate Sven Thorgren also got in on the act, landing a 16, but not quite as clean. So the 16 club includes two Europeans at the expense of Oceania, while Kimata and Spalding are developing quite a rivalry. With at least one athlete in every final, the Americas are looking strong. Let's get the lowdown on the team with Megan Oldham and Jasmine Baird. So on the ski side, we got Max Moffitt and A. Hall for the boys, and then myself and Elena Gaskell for the girls. So we got Cameron Spaulding, we got Liam Brearley, Momo Maher, and myself. And yeah, I'm stoked. We're a good team. We got this. For the finals, the format changed slightly. Instead of two jumps, everyone now gets three, and two jump scores will combine to make the final score. One of the jumps will be judged as normal difficulty, execution, amplitude, and landing. So just like qualifiers, it's your most technical trick. The second jump, however, is judged on style, so the technicality or difficulty is ignored. Instead, it's all about execution and amplitude, so style and size. And it's a popular format with the athletes. I really believe in style in snowboarding, and so I really like that we can mix it up and have one techie and put a bit of our own style into it too. And like, I think this gives me even more energy. Like, just the fact that we have to perform all together and you don't do it only for yourself makes it kind of special. Yeah, I feel the same way. We never really get to compete with the skiers, so it's kind of sick. Everybody at the top, everybody's hyped for everybody else. It's a way different vibe than any other contest I've done. Now it's time to meet Team Europe with Ferdinand Dahl and Nick Huber. Ah, uh, we're a unit, so it's yeah. we play each other well and it, build each other up, but we got a stack team with uh, myself and Yuna Skiers for the men's side, and then we have Julia Tano and Andy Karava for the women's skiing. And for snowboarders, we have Annika Morgan, the OG from Austria. We have Mia Brooks, current world champion. I'm, I mean, she's high up in that leader position, in my opinion. And then, of course, Sven Torgren, the legend. And uh, yeah, myself, and we are, we are just uh, matching each other perfect with our skier friends. With three jumps to play with in the final, the first one was always going to be about getting a solid score. In the women's free ski, the first jump saw a mix of tech and style. Julia Tano, still trying to find her feet, went for style with the 360, but sat down on the landing, which instantly put her on the back foot, needing to ace her next two jumps. Ruby Star Andrews, knowing that she had to take it to the Americans, took the bull by the horns with a left cork nine. But she couldn't quite find the grab and was marked down with a 57. Megan Oldham responded instantly with the same trick. But she went bigger and got a tickle of the grab to rub Ruby's nose in a 76-point score. 
Last to drop, Elena Gaskill mixed it up, starting with her style trick. A left 720 bio mute grab. The judges handed down a glowing reward of 87 points. Looking way more comfortable now, Julia Tano sent her second jump deep. It was a left five, but she couldn't quite hold on and reverted for a 35. Her fate to finish fourth was all but sealed. Ruby opted for her style trick next, and her left three blunt had an execution score worthy of a French guillotine. 91 points combined with her first jump score gave her a total of 148. Megan Oldham followed Ruby's lead going for style, but points lost for a tickle on the grab was amplified because the style jump is all about execution. 58, her combined score of 134 put her just behind Ruby. With the style score locked in, Elena Gaskell was pumping up the tech. She oozed confidence as she hopped round to switch. But lacking speed, she clipped the knuckle on her switch left bio 10. All hopes now rested on her third jump. With a 91 for her style trick and only a 57 for tech, Ruby was always going to go back to tech for jump three. And tidying up the left cork nine and getting the blunt grab this time, she gave the judges no choice but to let the points flow. 85 alongside that 91 gave Ruby a total of 176. Megan, playing follow the leader, launched into the exact same trick, a left cork nine blunt. It meant the judges were comparing apples with apples. They gave Megan an 89, but with her weak style score, it meant a total of 147, 29 points short of Ruby. That left Elena Gaskell. She charged into the kicker, hopped to switch, and set up for that switch left by 010. <laughs> But this time, she absolutely nailed it. It was a ram raid on the judges' point store. 97 for a total of 184. So, Elena Gaskell took a convincing victory for the Americas, but their top of the podium party was disrupted by Ruby Andrews, with Megan Oldham pushed into third. Yuna Kangas opened the men's free ski with his style jump, and what a jump to behold. His switch left by 09 shift, he bathed the judges in the glow of a master's work. 87.67 put Yuna in a very strong position. Ben Barkley got straight down to the tech with a switch left, double 18 mute. Oh. Even the big man was a little surprised by his own brilliance. An 89.67 for Bino, but let's take another look at this landing. It's an 1800 and he makes it look like a 720. So casual. Next was Max Moffat, who looked like a condor as he soared through this right dub 16 lead Cuban. But he got bogged down on the landing. It was an uncharacteristic mistake from the unflappable American. Last to drop was Jen Fuji of Asia. And his switch left triple 16 mute was almost as impressive as the GS turns he laid down to stop before the fences. The Japanese skier clearly very happy with that and it was reflected in the judges' scores, a 92.67 to take the lead after jump one. Unikangas was sitting pretty with his style score, so had two swings at tech. His switch left 12 double poke could easily have been a style trick, but 78.67 went into his tech score for a total of 166.33. Ben Barkley then floated through this switch left Cuban shifty 900. He was a little untidy on the landing and the judges weren't in a generous mood. A 72 gave Bino a total of 161.67, slotting in just behind Yuna. 
After missing his first jump, it was all or nothing for Max Moffat. Repeating his first trick, the right dub 16, he didn't make the same mistake twice. He gave the judges no choice but to empty the points vault. 93 flat, Max Moffat was back in the game. Jen Fuji was in the market for a style trick and went for the rewind 360 where you fake going 540 and bring it back to three. But as impressive as it was, it wasn't nearly as good as this incredible save. His reaction said it all lucky to be alive, but his points tally had suffered. Sat in first place, Unikangas revisited the switch left double 12 poke for his final jump. But he couldn't improve his score, and so he had a nervous wait to see if he could hold the lead. Back at the top, Ben Barkley consulted his inner style guru and opted to switch it up with a left double 1080 mute. He timed it perfectly. And the judges showered him with a 78.33, which saw him move ahead of Una into first with 168 points. With the 93 to build on, Max Moffat only needed a score of 75 to beat Bino. And his Rodeo 5 lead Cuban saw the judges drop to their knees and worship at the altar of Moffat. 90 points for a combined total of 183. With a 92.67 for his tech, Jen Fuji was ramping things up and went for this left double 12 truck driver poke. But as a style trick, it was lacking in execution. 47.33 would see Jen finish fourth, behind Unikangas in third, Ben Barkley in second, and Max Moffat in first. Ahead of the snowboard finals, let's get to know Team Asia with Nanaho Kiriyama and Mari Fukada. <laughs> えっと、かっこいいと思います。で、ゲームは同じ so into the women's snowboard finals. And it was Mia Brooks of Europe who opened steadily, at least by her standards, with a backside 720. An effortless start to put a 67 on the board for Europe. Oceania, meanwhile, were in desperate need of a big performance as the sole rep for the Southern Hemisphere in the snowboarding, Kowakashima stepped up and put down a massive backside 1260. Her reaction said it all and the judges agreed, serving up 86 points. Maybe a touch low, but I think the hand drag cost her. Momo Maha had won the Junior World Champs a week earlier with a switch backside 720 on this jump, but she went one. Well, 180 better with a switch backside 900. 83.33 for the Americas. Mary Fukada is one of those riders who loves to go huge. So it was a shock when she came up short. Mia Brooks was new to this jump and the crosswind had her hackles up. She opted to play it safe with a back nine. Technically not the hardest trick, but the execution was mint. 81.67. The judges loved it. With a 12.60 already under her belt, Cool could now start to play with her style trick, and she went all in. She had both poise and composure on the front side 720 mute to tail grab. But she sat down. The pressure was now on her third jump. 
Momo Maha, meanwhile, had a big score locked in for her switchback nine, so opted for the little black dress of snowboard style tricks, the frontside 360 nose bone. Simple yet stunning. 80 points to give Momo a combined score of 163.33 and the lead. Mary Fukada had backed herself into a corner, needing two perfect jumps. Tickling the grab and sitting back on her switch backside seven was heartbreaking and meant she would be a passenger for the third and final jump. Mia Brooks has more drip to her tricks than a leaky drain pipe and she let it all hang out on her style trick, a glorious front three nose bone for 78 points and a combo score of 159.67. Second place for the young Brit. Last to drop, Cool needed a 78 to overhaul Momo Maha a score easily within her reach. She went for the same trick again, the front seven mute, but it was a wild ride through the last 180, and she had to cling on to the tail. Such a shame after stomping the 12. And that left Momo to take a victory lap. With no pressure, she soared through another front three nose bone and bumped her score by two points, sealing a third win for the Americas, ahead of Mia Brooks in second and Cool Wakashima in third. And now for the final category, the men's snowboarding. Sven Thorgren was first to drop, and as one of the most decorated and experienced competitive snowboarders in the world, a backside 1440 was bread and butter for the Swede. The judges happy to provide the jam with a score of 76.67. Next up, Europe's chief cheerleader, Nick Huber, having stomped his 16 in qualifiers. It was a shock to see him go down so hard on the same trick in finals. Catching his heel edge, he rang his bell. Thankfully, the Huber cop walked away from this slam, but he was out. A big blow for the Europeans. <laughs> Ryoma Kimata, meanwhile, was on autopilot with this backside 1620. Absolute bolts on the landing, 88.33. A huge score for a near perfect trick. Cameron Spalding qualified in first, so was last to drop. And for the first time, the young Canadian made a mistake, under-rotating his backside 14 tail and heaping the pressure on. His body language said it all, the head down trudge. On his second jump, Sven Thorgren went to up the tech, but mistimed his back 16 attempt. And so his and Team Europe's hopes would rest on his final jump score. Ryoma Kimata, meanwhile, was digging deep into his bag of style tricks and opted for this frontside 540 off his toes. There was an arm waggle to bring round the last 180, though, and that cost him 70 points for a combo of 158.33. Under pressure, Cam Spaulding returned to his qualifying trick, the backside 1620. It wasn't his cleanest work with a double hand drag but it kept him in the hunt with the 78.67 behind Rioma and ahead of Sven. For his final jump, Sven Thorgren returned to a trick that has served him so well over the years. Oh it's the backside rodeo nose grab. He's done so many variations of this trick, but that 720 sent the judges into raptures. 93.33 for a combined score 170. The penultimate rider to drop was Ryoma Kimata. He opted for one of the classics, a backside 540 Weddle. He tweaked the grab and then held it for an impossibly long time. Unfortunately, it slowed the rotation and the landing was blown. Stunning in the air, though. That left Cam Spaulding. With two points more than Sven in the tech, he was chasing a 91.34 or better for the win. And he unveiled a stunning front three stalefish, holding the grab and almost rewinding the tweak for the landing. Oh. There we go. 
It heaped the pressure on the judges. An 82.67 for a total of 161.33. Second place for Cam behind Sven Thorgren in first, but ahead of Asia's Ryoma Kimata. For the overall results, the athlete's final placing becomes their score. So first gets one point, second two, and so on. So the lower the score, the better. All the individual scores then get added together for the overall team score. With victories in three of the four categories, no surprise to see the Americas leading with 23 points. Europe in second on 29, Oceania third on 32, and Asia fourth on 36. The next event is the Park Challenge, and the format means they will have to work as a team to win. We'll see you there.